Okay, we're going to close out chapter two with a numerical method. So what if we have a first order differential equation that we don't know how to solve analytically? Uh, as a quick example, perhaps this guy. Okay, so this is not a separable equation. It's not linear. It's not exact. And there's no substitution that exists that I'm aware of that would reduce it to either separable or linear equation. So well, what if we still needed to work out this differential equation? Well, there are a number of numerical methods that exist uh, which we can use to approximate the actual solution functions without necessarily getting the explicit forms of those functions. So what I mean by a numerical method is something that's sort of on par with Simpson's rule for evaluating integrals, right? It's, it's an iterative numerical process that approximates the actual correct solution. Let's look at the situation most generally. Let's consider the first order initial value problem say y prime is equal to f of x, y, so this is written in normal form, and it's subject to y of x zero equals y zero. And let's suppose a solution exists. And we'll call that solution y of x. All right, now we know many analytical methods for determining y of x in the aforementioned categories. But what we're going to look at here is a numerical method for estimating the function y of x. All right, now you may recall from Calc 1 that a differentiable function can be locally approximated by something called a linearization. So that is by the tangent line through the point that we're interested in. So suppose you have a function minding its own functionally business. Let's call this, say, y of x. And we have a particular point here, which we're going to call x0, y0. Then we can approximate y of x by drawing a tangent line through x0, y0, which near that point x0, y0 is very close to the function itself. Of course, the linearization is a bad approximation usually overall, globally across the function, but it's a good approximation locally through the point we're dealing with. All right, now from a first order initial value problem, we can easily generate a linearization because we certainly have a point, and we have the derivative at that point by plugging in x0, y0 into f. So while that's all well and good, with only a tiny bit more work, we can do a lot better than that. Uh, let's take a closer look at our hypothetical differential equation that we can't solve. And let's say this is the unknown curve of its solution. And here's the point x0, y0. OK. So as I mentioned, we can, of course, create the linearization through that point. However, we're only going to use part of that linearization. And what we're going to do is we're going to increment to the right to a point we're going to call x1. And we're just going to say that x1 is h units more than x0. We can use the linearization to find a new point here and call it x1, y1. So y1 would be found simply by taking x1 and plugging it into the linearization. In other words, y1 is L of x1. OK, now we're going to move to the right another increment of h units to something called x2. However, we're not just going to choose the point on the linearization to be our y2. 
Instead, we're going to go back to x1, y1 here, and while we don't know the solution itself, we do know the derivative of the solution at every point. Because recall, we have the actual differential equation, which means we can produce a new linearization through this point. Ah, perhaps it'll look something like this. It'll more closely model the behavior right there. And in that new linearization, we can calculate our new y2 value. OK, then we'll move another h units to the right to say x3. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to consult the differential equation from the x2, y2 to find yet another linearization. And we're going to use that linearization to find the next point, x3, y3. And we can do this as much as we want, and it's going to approximate the true curve. Right now, obviously, this is not giving us an actual formula for the function. All we're doing is approximating the next point over by using the approximation from the previous point. And in fact, the farther away you go from the initial value, the greater likelihood that you're going to deviate from the true shape of the function because you're approximating based off of earlier approximations. Now this technique is called Euler's method. Okay, so let's quickly recall how to find a linearization. Well, we remember from algebra that the equation of a line through a point is given by y minus y0 is equal to m times x minus x0. Or you could write y is equal to y0 plus m x minus x0. And then we could just call this guy our linearization. L of x is y0 plus m x minus x0. Ah, but m is of course the slope. And can we get the slope here? Absolutely we can. We have the differential equation in normal form, which means that we have y prime equals f of x, y. So that's exactly what m is. So L of x is y0 plus the slope at the point of tangency multiplied by x minus x0. OK, so this is our linearization function for the point x0, y0. Now, of course, we're going to need a new linearization function as we step from x0 to x1, x1 to x2, x2 to x3, etc. And all we use the linearization function for is just to generate the next y number, right? So we go from y1 to y2 to y3 and so on. So what we really can say is the following here. We can say that the nth y is the previous y value plus the derivative at the previous x, y value multiplied by the new x value minus the previous x value. Ah, but the new x value minus the previous x value is just h. So we can see that the next y value is the previous y value plus h times f of the previous x value and the previous y value. And that's Euler's method. That's the numerical method that will generate all of the y values. It's an iterative process, so if you want y48, you're going to have to go and find y47. And if you want y47, you'll have to go and find y46, and so on. So Euler's method will approximate the solution to this initial value problem. Our first job is to select a suitably small increment value and call it h. The smaller h is, the more calculations that you need to do because your increments will be very close together. However, the better your approximation is going to be. Once you've decided on your h value, 
you can generate as many xn's and yn's as you need. And the way you do that is this way. xn is the previous, so xn minus 1 plus h, just h units over to the right. And yn is the previous y value plus h times f. Remember the right-hand side of the differential equation, which is actually just the derivative of the unknown function, at the previous x and y values. And there we are. Okay, let's see this thing working in an example. Okay, so here we're going to use Euler's method to approximate a particular function value y of 0.5, where y is the unknown solution to this differential equation. Now, to be clear, we can actually solve this differential equation, and I chose one for this example that we can solve. This is both separable and linear. And I chose one that we can solve so that we could check to see how close our answer is at the end of this process. But you can imagine that Euler's method, of course, is intended to be used for differential equations uh, for which you don't have an analytical way of producing y. Okay, so let's dig into this process. Uh, we are given a small h value of 0.1, and we're going to iterate through various x n's and y n's until we get to uh, 0.5 for our x value. So we're going to start with x0 being the initial x value, of 0 and y0 being the initial y value of 1. So all right, let's produce all the next steps here. So x1 is going to be uh, x0 plus h, of course. Well, that would be 0 plus 0.1. So that's, of course, just 0.1. And y1 is y0 plus h times f of x0, y0. Okay, well y0 is 1, h is 0.1, and our f, which is just the right-hand side of the differential equation in normal form, and we're going to plug in x0 and y0 to that. So that's going to be negative 2 times x0, which is 0, y0, which is 1, and we can see that actually this simply evaluates to y1 of 1. Okay, so let's find x2 now. Uh, that's simply going to be x1 plus h. Okay, so that's 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. So that would be 0 0.2. And y2 is going to be y1 plus h times f of x1 y1. So y1 is 1, h is 0.1, and we have negative 2 times x1, which is 0 0.1, y1, which is 1. So I did this calculation and got y2 is 0.98. Okay, moving right along. Let's do x3. So that's x2 plus 0.1, so that's going to be 0.3. And y3 will be y2, which is 0 0.98 plus 0 0.1 times negative 2 times x2, which is now 0.2, and y2, which is 0.98. So I got that y3 is 0 0.9408. Okay. Let's move over a little bit so we have some more room to work on the right. So x4 will be 0.4, and y4 is y3, 0 0.9408, plus h, which is 0.1, times f of the previous x and y values. So that would be negative 2 times 0.3 and 0.9408. So we get that y4 is 0 0.884352. Okay, and x5 is 0.5. Now we know that that's actually the x value we were seeking, 
which means that correspondingly y5 is going to be the actual y value we seek, or the close approximation generated by Euler's method to the true y value. So we're going to say that's the previous y value plus 0.1 times this stuff. And I calculated a y5 of 0.8136384. All right, so the answer to the original question is, which was to approximate y of 0.5, that answer is 0.8136034. So again, we don't know the y solution. Uh, we could figure it out. But we are guessing that y of 0.5 is about all of that. So let's see how close we are. Okay, well, we can solve this differential equation either as a linear equation or a separable one. So let's just solve it as a separable one. We can see that 1 over y dy is equal to negative 2x dx. So this is ln of absolute value of y is equal to negative x squared plus some constant. So the absolute value of y is equal to e to some constant times e to the negative x squared. All right, so we could say y is equal to some new constant times e to the negative x squared, where that new constant is plus or minus e to the original constant. Also note that y equals zero is a solution, but it's not a singular solution because we can simply let c equal zero to obtain that solution. This was an initial value problem, so let's determine c by plugging in y of 0 equals 1. So we get 1 is equal to c times e to the negative 0 squared. Uh, well, that tells us that c is simply 1. So the particular solution is y equal e to the negative x squared. All right, so if we plug in 0.5, the question is how close is e to the negative 0.25, which is the square of that, uh, equal to 0.813, blah, blah, blah. So I did the calculation, and I got that it was about a 4% difference. I think it's more impressive if we see it on Desmos. OK, so I plotted the sequence of our x and y endpoints. You can see we initially had the 0 0.01, followed by 0 0.11, followed by 0 0.2, 0 0.98, etc., all the way down to our last point, which was 0 0.5, 0 0.813 stuff. And we found the particular solution of y equals e to the negative x squared. So let's turn that graph on. And you can see that we basically picked up the behavior of the graph. Although the farther we move to the right, the greater the error was, and that would have been likely to continue if we had kept going. However, if we'd use smaller h values, like 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 or whatnot, of course, we would have way more calculations to do. However, the individual dots would conform much closer to the true curve, so you'd get a more accurate prediction. Okay, so that's how Euler's method works.